And the second reason your faith has to be more than words is because if it's not, well, it wrecks your witness. Nobody's going to take you seriously when you start evangelizing or you start proselytizing or telling people about Jesus because he obviously hasn't changed you. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. My daughter, Addie, she's our oldest, the nine-year-old. She is really into running away right now. That's her go-to move. Whenever she gets in trouble, whenever she's told that she can't do something that she wants to do, she will inevitably go into her room and shut the door, get out her little bag, and she'll put in a change of clothes. She'll grab her toothbrush. She'll probably put her PJs in there and then maybe a granola bar. She'll come out to find me. I'm usually out in the front room somewhere, and she'll, she'll look at me, and she'll say, well, I guess since you don't love me anymore, I have to find a new place to live. And the problem with being married to someone like Jenny is she hears that no matter where she is in the house, and you just hear her voice reverberating off the walls, they'll send you back within 24 hours. I mean, this is what <laughs> always happens. Now, me personally, and you can check with her, she'll acknowledge that that's true. Whenever I see Addie like that, I hate it when she gets emotional. I don't like to see her upset like that, but I'm not going to alter my behavior. I'm not going to change and say, oh, well, okay, then I'm going to take back the no that I gave you and give you a yes, because she's, she's all words. She's all talk. She's never going to actually leave. She couldn't survive five minutes out there by herself. She's not going to leave. The only thing she actually does is she models this behavior for her siblings, and now Grayson, the little five-year-old, he's into this move also, except he's just not bright. This guy will go into the room. When he gets in trouble, he's got this Thomas uh, the Train backpack that he's got, but it's got the handle that you can wheel, like if you're in the airport. So he comes out the other day upset. He forgot to put the handle down, so he's got like a radar behind his head, and he's walking out like this, and, he's, and he says, Daddy, I'm leaving. I'm going to run away. And I decided I was just going to go with it. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, uh, could I look in your bag? And like instantaneously, now he's all excited. Oh, sure, yeah. And he takes the bag off to show me. You know what this dude had packed to run away? Not making this up. He had the TV remote control and Bristol's left shoe. That's what he had put in the bag. <laughs> Not thinking you're going to make it very far, buddy, but he was all excited. Listen, this, this is my point. Jenny and I are not going to alter our behavior as parents because our children are all talk. They're never actually going to leave. And that's my point. If your faith is nothing but talk, then no one, absolutely no one, is going to follow you to church because it obviously doesn't do anything for you, and they're certainly not going to ask you about your Savior, because if this person really exists, what difference is he making in your life? All you are is talk. If the world that you encounter, wherever that is, whether it's at school, or whether that's in the workplace, or whether that's at the grocery store, wherever you congregate with people, if they open up the contents of your life, and they look inside and they see a remote control in a left shoe, they are not likely to say, that person's got it figured out. I want to walk the path that they're walking. So how do we do this? How do we make our faith more than just words?